Hi, in this video, we're going to introduce some of the home and small office, home office, remote access connections. Basically, the different ways that you may that you can connect uh, to the internet from home or small office, home office. Okay, cable system. This is what I actually have. Uh, in my home, I have a coax cable that actually carries RF radio frequency signals across the network. Uh, this provides me with high-speed internet, digital television, and a possibility to have residential telephone service, which I don't have. I just use my cell phone. Okay, this connects to a HFC, hybrid fiber coaxial, coaxial network. Uh, so basically what this means is at the, in the residential area, we have coax cable. Uh, that connects all the homes and they somewhere upstream connect to a fiber node that uh, actually converts it from the coax to a fiber network, sometimes a fiber ring. Uh, at this fiber ring, at somewhere along this fiber ring here, we have a uh, fiber hub that connects to the head end. Uh, this is basic. This is the head end is what uh, terminates the HFC system. It's uh, and this is where they get like their via satellite or other ways uh, connect either to uh, different uh, digital different uh, cable sta uh, television stations. Excuse me to the internet, etc. Okay. Uh, one of the things I'm happy about, at least with my cable system, what they provide is I get native IPv6. So you may want to check with your provider, see if you're getting that. Lots, many of the home users, most people have no idea uh, that they're receiving the native IPv6 and that for most of their traffic is being carried over IPv6, going to Google, Netflix, Facebook, uh, majority of uh, the websites, uh, the, the major websites are all IPv6 enabled. Okay, enough of the IPv6 for, for now. All right, uh, some of the components that are included in this, uh, some of the two main components we talked about the, at the head end, we have the CMTS, Cable Modem Termination System. Uh, Again, this, this uh, resides at the head end. It's what modulates and demodulates the signal to and from the cable modem. So at the home is where you have your cable modem. In my case, the coax cable connected to the cable modem. Okay, looking at DSL, so digital subscriber line. Um, so many years ago, Bell Labs identified a typical voice conversation over a local loop. That's the connection between your house, the copper line that goes from your house to then uh, the, the central office, uh, required a bandwidth of only 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz. Okay. This was enough of a frequency range to carry a normal voice conversation from a very low frequency to a very high frequency. Oh, I needed to show you. I love this here. This Western Electric is crossing the telephone with crossing the telephone with the T with a TV set. This is back. This is 1968. Matter of fact, I thought that was pretty modern. 19 what was modern for me? 1968 because I didn't have this. 1968 was a touch tone phone. I don't think I think I saw my first touch tone phone was probably push button phone. Back in the early 70s. Imagine that. Okay. All right. Love that old stuff. Okay. DSL, digital, digital subscriber line, a means of providing high speed connections over the pre installed copper wires. ADSL provides higher downstream bandwidth than upload, and that's what most people get. Uh, for satisfactory ADSL service, that local loop must be under three and a half miles, under 4.46 kilometers. In some areas, you can also get symmetric DSL, which provides the same capacity in both directions. Uh, one of the issues with DSL are these pre-existing copper wires. 
uh, the phone company in an effort to try and compete with the cable industry that can provide much higher bandwidth and also over those same coax coax lines, in some case fiber, uh, is uh, not just provide high-speed internet, but also, of course, also TV and phone. Uh, DSL has a problem with, uh, you know, they'll, they'll try to do, uh, provide television service over the same copper lines. It's, it hasn't been very successful. But the phone company is actually looking at new ways of actually bringing fiber, maybe not directly to the home, but within, if I remember correctly, 800 feet, uh, and then having the shorter distance with the copper uh, line from your house to the fiber hub, it will be able to provide much higher speed internet, TV, and other things. Okay, so I mentioned service providers deploy uh, the DSL connection over this local loop. Okay, so at the home, you'll have your DSL modem. And then at the central office or somewhere between the central office and you will be the DSLAM, the DSL multiplexer. And sometimes you'll, you can actually see these big boxes located in your neighborhood. Okay. And that's where they actually will connect multiple DSL subscribers and then they'll connect that DSLAM uh, to directly to the central office, multiplex everybody over the same connection. Okay, wireless connection. So we kind of have a three wireless possibilities. We, there's municipal Wi-Fi, which is just a mesh of interconnected access points. Matter of fact, I lived in a city in Italy for a little while uh, called Frascati that actually had a, a municipal Wi-Fi network. It was, it was halfway decent, depending upon where you were and the time of day. Uh, but it definitely... Uh, provided me with some Wi-Fi access, which I wouldn't have had normally. Um, there's also a cell mobile. So just using your mobile phones, using the wa uh, radio waves like you do on your cell phone to communicate with a near nearby cell tower. Oh, there, that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, yeah. So actually you get this little 4G LTE uh, transceiver here that uh, connects to your house wirelessly and then also connects to the cell net network wirelessly. I have a friend of mine that has this because the DSL connection was so poor, is actually using the 4G LTE and it actually works fairly decently. The LTE category 10 supports up to 450 megabits download and 100 megabits upload. He's not getting that but it was uh, quite an improvement over uh, the, the DSL connection that he had. Okay, uh, the other wireless is satellite. This is basically when nothing else is available in a lot of remote areas. Uh, so you, uh, just like kind of, uh, satellite TV, you need to have a clear view towards the, towards the equator. This is because uh, the, the, uh, the satellite, oh, what do they call those satellites that have to be, I want to say asynchronous, oh, what's that word? Oh my gosh. But the uh, satellites that have to stay in uh, the, the, stay, the same proximity in your orbit so you don't have to be moving your satellite dish all the time. Oh, that's going to come to me as soon as I finish this presentation. Anyway, um, there's also WiMAX. Uh, which uh, you have a Wi-Fi router at your home that connects to a WiMAX, uh, kind of almost like a cell tower in, in an area, but that's pretty much been replaced by the LTE uh, uh, or if you have cable or DSL. But that was also another way that uh, if you lived in a remote area, some remote areas were putting in the WiMAX uh, towers but uh, like I said, do you have other, other forms of access like the cell LTE, cable or DSL? That seems to be a better option. All right, so kind of looking at these, so which one do you choose? So uh, 
cable, although, you know, the bandwidth is shared by others and it says that the slow data rates during high usage hours, I don't normally, haven't normally experienced that. And I've had cable for, for many years. Um, once it reaches the, the fiber hub, uh, the fiber node that converts, that goes from coax to fiber, then of course it's not an issue, but it's just within the residential area that these frequencies are shared over the same coax cable. DSL has limited bandwidth and it is uh, distance sensitive and uh, usually has much slower uh, uh, bandwidth rates than, than cable. Fiber to the home, of course, that's always the best. Uh, but, and that's something that's coming. Um, so in many areas, I know in where I live, or where I used to live in Santa Cruz, I live outside of Santa Cruz now, they're installing fiber to the home throughout the city of Santa Cruz. Uh, cell mobile, talked about that, but uh, you know, coverage can sometimes be an issue. Uh, just depending where you are, sometimes where you are in your home. Uh, Wi-Fi mesh, most municipalities haven't deployed that, but some have. And then satellite tends to be a little bit more expensive and limited ca capacity per subscriber. All right, so that's just a short introduction to some of the ways to remotely access the internet from home, small office, home office. <laughs>